あそびテック。Bear with me. Hello, welcome back to Digitizer. I'm just finishing up clearing up round here. So we've got that, that's it. We don't need any more of those gubbins. That's from catalogue, that's fine. We've got that. All right, all good. Um, I am going to need a little bit of help to uh, get through the last of this. So I've I've made this. Hang on. Here we go. Beep. I've been working for years on this. I'm I, a I, robot. I found scraps of all different types of uh, Android wear down in the basement. So I've just been putting this together. Boop. Bots and men <laughs> coming together in perfect <laughs> harmony. Bots and men mm. come together. Right! <gasps> I can't believe it! It was me all along. Oh! Like, but, I, I was the robot. But if that's true, why did you let me stick your belly full of wires? <laughs> oh, that's the toppest prank I've ever seen. You were a, a robot, robot, didn't you? Because, you know, at lifeless. And I look like him. Yeah, I look like one. You have no emotion. No. And, you know, you're cold inside and dead. And everything that you say is a facade. <laughs> Sounds like you're describing Vichy Sunak. Oh! <laughs> I'm resting on this like I'm a fucking chimp in a zoo. Like, you should have got me a tyre. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> could have swung on it's it. It's like you're one mask away from being <laughs> Leatherface in a Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. <laughs> no one ever talks about the Binatone series of games consoles, do they, Paul? No, is it because it's crap? Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah. From the era when everyone, because there was no such thing as copyright, apparently in the 1970s, everyone was cloning Pong. No one talks about the Binatone, but it was a great British success story. Was it? Yeah, it was. It was huge. The company, believe it or not, is still going today. Started in the 1950s by three Indian brothers, Gulu Qatar and Partap Lavani. Oh, okay. Uh, and the son, I think, of uh, Partap, I think, is now running the company. He bought it out, I think, in the 90s. What do they make now, then? They, they mainly do sort of mobile phone technology and stuff like that. They even, I think, sponsored a QPR back in the 2000s. No. Named after their sister, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. They had a sister Binatone. Yes. Was no, it Binner? Uh, oh, okay. Um, or Biner. They did a whole series of them. They started out in black and white, which this one obviously is, uh, which I think dates to about 1976. So it predated Atari's oh. 2600, just about. The first model was 39.95, which in today's money is about 300 quid. Bloody hell. But I remember at the time thinking that was a revelation. So that's arcade quality graphics in your own home. It that's is. not even a joke. That is arcade quality. Uh, you know, in 1976. But this just isn't just Pong, though, is it? Well, there was also a light gun, which did come with it, but we've left it in the car. Nice. It's too hot to go and get it. It's also no. It's in the basement. Sorry, no, we very, didn't leave it in the car. Um, it's very deep. It's couldn't on a shelf. We couldn't reach, in it. Yes, the uh, yeah. the top shelf. Top shelf where all the naughtiest <laughs> things are. All the naughty games the real, are. The real, and the, gu the real guns. Yeah. We've got a load of real guns down there. Haven't we? we shouldn't have, but we do. We do. We have so many guns down there. What's your favourite one of the guns? Oh, Beretta. I never, never, I, ne I never even met her. Yeah, well, you but, never forget her, your first Beretta. So the Bitter Tone was the best-selling TV game in the UK. Grew the game sector five times in two years. Oh, that's good. It's very good. It's very good. It's very, very good. Important. But then, of course, uh, the Atari came out. Oh. Bitter Tone couldn't keep up because they weren't really a games company. They were a consumer electronics company. 
you know, importing radios and the like from Japan back they in were, the 50s and 60s. Their concentration wasn't on creating games. No, it no. was on making a quick buck in a market that was increasingly popular. But also, this is all locked in. You buy the thing, that's it. You don't There's get no any more. So with Atari, Atari you yeah. go, oh... Swap it all out. Swap it all out. So they, were... I mean, Binatone got out of the, the industry. I mean, they tried, they were sort of a kind of opportunist in that they released their version of the Walkman in the 80s as well. Oh, right. So it was, it was sort of anything that was a bit faddy. Do you know Ringo Starr's real moon? It is, of course. Go on. Dickest moon. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously Dickest moon is the best thing you could have thought of as <laughs> Ringo Starr's real name. Dickest moon. <laughs> Dickest. Shall we have a play? But what about this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey! Right, come on. Let's Oi. do it. Now, I like the controls. They're very simple. It's just they this. It's, with a, a, it's with a paddle. A, with a pa with a That's what they call them, paddles. Is it? Oh, look, look I'm moving my paddle. Yeah, but it's in it's in um, we'll play demo mode we'll right now. Well, what do you want to play? We've got tennis, squash, squash. Well, let's squash. play the classic pond. Well, they were calling it tennis. Yeah. So, yeah, so what do we got? Tennis. Squash. Basically, they're all variations on a theme. They basically alter the number of paddles you have. Uh, where's your paddle? I don't know. It's all, oh, oh it there it is. Hey! Who needs your Skyrim when you've got the simple joy of Pong? Oh, I'm winning. Oh, yeah? That means I'm better than you. Oh, that doesn't take much, though, is it? I'm one of life's failures. Oh, bugger. Now it's a draw. Uh, oh, hey. And this is what you're going to watch for the next half hour on Digitizer this week. Well, come on. This is where it all started. This is, ah, oh. ah, this is where it began. This is where video games... Is uh, it? No, it's not. Uh, there we go. Well, Actually, <laughs> if you hadn't come in late, you'd have known we covered that. Yeah. I'm we covered it. Keep having an argument. Turn up in time. <laughs> oh, no, I was, I was arguing with Octavia. No, That's not fair. It's not fair. You That's know. not fair. It's not, it doesn't matter, does it? I've still won. 10-3 it was. I was... Mm. Yeah, well, ha, ha, ha. Shouldn't have gotten angry then, should you? I can't, should've... I can't help it. I have an issue. I've won. How about that? How about that? What an arse. I'm the king of Binatone. Have you turned on. it on? Yeah. Well, it's not going to work if you don't I turn didn't know it was on. switched off, did you I? You didn't tell spoon. me. God, you stop no, picking okay, on don't me. Don't put shooting on because we, we left the gun okay. in the bunker. What's all this? This is this is football. Why? No, it's no, not. No, it is. It's like football. You can oh, oh, Work I it can... out, Paul. Oh, 15 what? nil. Well, press start. Oh, this oh, is yeah. fun, isn't it? Ah. Oh, all right, okay. Now this, oh. ah, on now, goal. Now to make this fair, you have an argument with Octavius, right. and then we'll see who wins. All right, Octavius, what? Aren't lemons great? Oh, I can't believe it. It is quite enjoyable. There's I'm not not enjoying this. There's a certain well, skill to it. Well, uh, there's a skill to it, and it's almost zen-like. Yeah. Oh, balls. How do you control the the, the other one? They, they it just both control. It's like football. Look, see, look, look. I'm moving them both at the same. Oh, time. I'm moving the other two. Yes. I you thought... only just worked that out. Yeah. I thought Who I was. You thought I was controlling them. The man over there. No, I thought there was some system going on where I've I was somehow. The man control... over there doesn't exist. I've told you ten times. Well, I didn't pay attention, did oh, I? I was too busy having an argument. See, now that I know. Oh, oh. Yeah, now that I know. Oh, now I've opened How the key. How do you know when the game's finished? Uh, when I give up on all life, <laughs> this is it. Uh, oh, hey. skills. Oh, ah, ah, ah. I might just concede this because this is going. Concede. Concede this. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, wait. Uh, 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 goal. Was well, this a comeback king? Uh. It's the comeback king. Hey, oh, oh, uh, hey, oh. no. I, oh. I mean, it's not. It's pretty good that this is still working after 45 years. I am genuinely surprised. Ah. Oh, I don't want to win anyway. It sucks. <laughs> Go in the bunker. Yeah, go bunker. Going deeper into the bunker. Why don't you come with us? You have messed up.
I've got an original ZX Spectrum and a CD32. I don't do emulation, my systems shine like new. My Jaguar's still in its box, my Neo Geo 2. I'll show them on my Twitch stream, but if you touch them, I'll cut you. Oh, I am a retro gamer. I play all games from dust till the dawn. Fire up the Vectrex, mother. Oh, I am a retro gamer. My other main interest is poor. Check out my SG-1000. I pay 200 quid for a Mega CD and 300 for an NES. 1,000 for an Odyssey, the old games are the best. I remortgage for a Hyperscan, I don't like sport or fun. My wife left me for another man, now I'm bitter for an Amco like gun. Oh, I am a retro gamer. I collect, I spreadsheet, I game. Where's my Dreamcast VMU? Yes, I am a retro gamer. A hoarder by another name. You see, they didn't all go to landfill. In between my gaming streams, I'm trolling by default. I seek out other streamers to point out all their faults. I've crowdfunded my latest book, it's called Gaming Facts by Me. But you can go on Wikipedia and read the text for free. Oh, I am a retro gamer. The games, fairs, and markets I run. Actually, it's the Color TV game Yes, six. I am a retro gamer. There's no more room in my home. Hello. My name is. I am God, author of the New York Times bestseller, The Bible, and inventor of the, uh, the of Earth. My readers are often asking me, Ooh! My readers are often asking me, when am I going to write a follow-up? Well, that day is finally here. I'm pleased to announce Jesus into the Bible verse. In this exciting science fantasy novel, Jesus travels to an alternate universe where he encounters alternate versions of many of your favourite the Bible characters. Mary, Joseph, King Tut, and get this, John the Baptist, Baptist is a cat, and Jesus encounters an evil version of himself who wants to do terrible things like rewrite the Ten Commandments to say things like thou shall kill and throw stones throw stones at the child and and he's got a really high pitched voice it just agitates the cats Jesus has to stop this evil doppelganger but how will he find uh, enough nail bad news there aren't any nails in this alternate universe, so he can't nail him up. You've got to glue him to the cross. It's the only way to stop the evil Jesus. And then our Jesus got to get back to our universe where he will have uh, passed on all the lessons he learned from because the evil's wrong. Jesus into the Bible verse. Excitement, romance, miracles, pestilence. Ooh, pineapples, King Tut, an exciting chase sequence on the ca on camel. Coming soon, please leave me a review on the Goodreads. Debates. Are you revving up? Yes, it was. Debates. Aren't they lovely? We like to have them on this show uh, where we pit things against each other and have a nice old chat doing so. So we are doing a debate for the Hall of Games. Hey. The Hall of Games, where we put the best games of a system in a nice bucket, don't we, for in Wally a bucket Bong? bucket for Wally Bong. Wally, to Wally sift Bong. through. Wally Bong, not Bong. 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 What happened to Wally Bong? No, you, there was never a Wally Bong. You wrote Wally Bong down. No, you wrote, I saw it last oh, time. Oh, no, you I wrote, wrote, yeah, you're right, I wrote <sighs> Wally Bong down. It's bong. But it's Bong. Anyway, that's the important information. How are you? I'm great. So we've got Pete again, <laughs> and uh, and do Mr. Biffle. Do you prefer Biffle. Peter? Yeah, what do you think, uh, Peter? He keeps calling you Pete. That's well, fine. That's because Pete, I it's the same thing, isn't it? I just, you know, what about uh, Petey? Petey boy. Don't call me that. What about uh, <laughs> Pete, Pete? Pete. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is mature. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
So, Pee Pee, are you enjoying the show? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, yeah, come. We're having a very serious debate. We're having a very serious debate here today about the ZX Spectrum. Biffo. Yeah, I love. And Pee Pee. <laughs> sorry. You need to shut what the fuck up. <laughs> And Peter will be picking a game each to represent this system, and that game today, Mr. Biffo, is for you. Oh, what? The ZX Spectrum Sorry, game. Sorry, I was drifting off. I was thinking about Carry On Films. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to fall into a comatose state and carry your convenience just rolls in? No, wasn't there? There was one, uh, there was a character. Uh, Peter? Peter, <laughs> let's carry on camping. Where are we going with this? I don't know. <laughs> I was, I'm just telling you oh, where it's, I went. It's, it's a name, it's a normal name. <laughs> <laughs> it's a normal name. I've never had this when I've said my name before. <laughs> just <laughs> normal names. It makes it special. It's a special name for this show. I've just, it's just a normal name, it's everyone. Just a normal Stop making fun of his name. <laughs> Peter. It's quite common. Peter. Anyway, <laughs> what game have you picked to represent the ZX Spectrum? The Night Law by Ultimate Play the Game. Night Law by Ultimate Play the Game. Mm. You have to, do you have to say that not all of it for the company? That is technically the the company name. Yeah. So when they had board meetings, it was like, "Hello, this is the CEO from Ultimate Play the Game, and this is the accountant from Ultimate Play the Game, and Barbara from Ultimate Play the Game." Peter. Hello. What game have you decided to choose? Jetpack Peter. by Ultimate Play the Game. Oh, by Ultimate. So it's an <laughs> ultimate thing as well, really, is, as well. Yeah. Well, you got it. You've got to go for an ultimate game. What could you pick? That wasn't an ultimate game to represent this system. Yes, it Just after mm. out of interest. Yes, yeah, it Willie. Is, it, yeah. is that the one we play a little man jumping through a big house collecting oh, things to get don't out? Don't say it. Like you're like you're a nan. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, the one where you made the little man do the jumping. Yeah, was it a game about a little man that did jumping? Yes, it was. Like every room was. was. A, every screen was a room in the house. It was like a nightmare of a game. Yeah, it was hard, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a hard game. Yeah. I like hard game. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure where this is going, but... It doesn't have to go anywhere, does it? He's doing, doing quite well, though, isn't he? Right. Right. I'm a good boy. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, tell me I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. You tell me I'm a good How boy. How am I doing that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's not going to win now. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it rolls. Right, so, Peter, you're starting off with the gambit. Tell me, sell me on Jetpack. Jetpack. Great game. You're a spaceman. You fly around mm. space, pick, putting your ship together. Oh, okay. Have you not heard of Jetpack? No, I have. I had the action. <laughs> they had the Xbox what? Action Replay Rare game, so I had played of all of them briefly. Are you sure? But I didn't remember them growing up because I never had the system nor the games. Okay. I was an Amstrad CPC kind of guy, unfortunately. How are you judging this? You're I... an Amstrad CPC. <laughs> I think I'm the perfect person to judge, He's for impartial. I know nothing. He knows nothing. I'm impartial. Okay, so Jetpack, you're a spaceman, yeah. your ship's falling apart, you put it back together, yeah. you make your ship, you fuck off, and then you land somewhere else, it falls and apart do it again. again, do it again. It's a bit like Pikmin, that, isn't it? No. Yeah, in Pikmin you crash, and you build your ship together, and then you fly it's away. Point. It is quite like that. I mean, I've never played Pikmin, so... And it's also like Toe Jam and Earl, and you crash, and you build your spaceship, and you go home. Okay. I'm just saying, it's a nice story, isn't it? <laughs> okay. It's a okay. nice story. It's a nice story. It's a good story. Yes, so lovely, yeah. so is for. the game like one of those ones where you hold the button down and that raises them up, so when you let go, he drops? So is it like that kind of mechanic? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's a constant gravity, and you just and pick up bits of a ship. You have to f fend off aliens who are flying on the screen. So it's like that game Bubble Fight, isn't it, on the NES, where you have to float up and dodge the bubbles and they How burst How do you know you all float? these other games, but you don't know Jetpack? Didn't have it as a kid. I don't know what else I need to say on that front. I never had one. And I don't like your accusations, <laughs> sir. <laughs> right. Okay, so you have picked another game from the same company, Night Law. That's correct. And tell us all about now, Night... No, not Light. Not Light. Not, not, not Light. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm starting to pick at things. I'm getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> your segment. This is your show. You can't go halfway through. I'm getting bored of this. Uh, Night, Night Law. Night Law. When I first saw Night Law in a magazine, just a screenshot. A yeah. screenshot, it blew my mind. It was a little kind of box out, and it was the isometric graphics were the pinnacle of what the Spectrum ever achieved. But you can't, you can't do anything. You, like you try and walk through a door and it's here and you're trying to walk through a wall because the isometric throws you off so badly. It doesn't matter. It it does. Does. It, was it, it the first game matter. to use that structure? Or, well, or was, no, you no. can sort of say it was like no. sort of Marble Madness in the and, arcades and oh. what, what was the Zaxxon and stuff and Attack I guess 3D. you could say Cuba as well, I guess. Not really. No. Not Cuba. I tried to get involved in over yeah. this. I, got, I made no. a fool of myself, haven't I? I admit, it's a difficult game to play. It is. It is a very difficult game to play, even more difficult to complete. 
Yep. Here we go uh, again with I didn't complete it. I don't no care. One, did anyone out there complete? No, I bet no, some of them. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> Night Law is, it's, it's, sorry, you, you would show that to a kid now and they would go, that is pretty. No, they wouldn't. They'd be like, what the fuck is that? Oh, well, about, about jetpack, like, jetpack. These jetpack you can pick up instantly and you're like, oh, this is amazing. I know what I'm doing. This is... But, this is but Quang did the new version of Jetpack. It was incredible. Oh. The masses loved don't it. Start, don't start trying don't to curry favour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he has did. no just say in any sad. of this. He's just sitting there like a handsome man. He's tasty. He's too <laughs> tasty for me. <laughs> I don't... He's it's too tasty. Oh, 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 it's all oh, oh, I could lick him like a lollipop. Oh, I could crush Oh, I could crush your grave. Let's do all that shit as well. I could, I could wrestle on uh, our action man. Yeah, that's one of them, wasn't it? Quang, could... would you would you recreate Night Law? No. Why? Why? It's difficult. Exactly. Or well, make an easier difficult. version. Yeah. No, the game is just difficult. Yeah, it is difficult. It's just a pain to play. The color clash on it's like strobe. It's like your top. Well, I'm jet pack. Like jet pack. All right. Well, let's, clash let's, when let's, the let's... bubbly things kind of when he flies. Past. Oh, it's Look. barely perceivable. Look, I like jet pack. It's it's brilliant, <laughs> and I agree with you. Right. Cool. That's it. <laughs> that, no, but, well, that makes right. my decision a bit easier. Thanks so much. But I was going to say this, right? We're talking about what represents the console. Yeah, Does that all. push it as much as no. your game? No, no. Well, Jeff, well, are we no. talking about pushing? The well, console? I'm just saying getting the best out of it to be yeah. the best representation well, for the system. Best gameplay or best graphics? Well, what, it's, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are we most talking about? I genuinely iconic, don't know. The most iconic game on that system, I think, it's got to be Night Lord. Because everyone, it blew everyone's Je minds back in the right, day. Right, you couldn't even play Night Law on the original 16K Spectrum. So, you can play Jetpack so, on every oh, version yeah, of the Spectrum. Yeah, 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 it's true. Look, I've already said I agree with you. Well, well, what are we doing here then? What are we doing here then? My legs are rubbing together at the top because this is. The well, at least your pants down. aren't falling down again, like last time. Like doing it with my granddad Jay on holiday. No, okay, one last thing to say about oh, Night right, he's still One last to this. thing. I mean, you're going to win, by the way. Just want to get I ahead of that. Better yeah. cover. It came in the big box. The big kind of doesn't sound box. very environmentally friendly. Good, okay, it? look, that was back then. The it's environment was fine back, back then. No one gives cares about the environment in the eighties. No, exactly, and they were right off well, <laughs> in some yeah. respects. <laughs> in terms of well, it doesn't matter that, which game I pick because ultimate wins really at the end I of the do. day, doesn't it? So congratulations to them both. But fundamentally, you've won. Jetpack is the best representation of the system. It's fair, and you were almost going to win until you said that last bit. To be honest, so. <sighs> It's your fault you lost. Can I check what you've downloaded? Yeah, what you've downloaded. Welcome to Ganon's Virtual Bath Time, the great new virtual reality experience created by me, Paul Ganon. Anyway. Is it oh yeah, to Peter, did you what? not have a look? No, I didn't have a, I didn't. Wow. I'm Paul Ganon, I'm a dirty boy, and I need to have a wash. Would you like to help me have a wash? Anyway, oh. um, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that Join was us that. next time for another uh, Hall of Games. Bye. 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 Yes. Are you being failed by your owl? Do you wish your owl's JJ was more glittery? At Bovingdon Avian Beauty Salon, we provide an array of services that guarantees your bird of prey beach ready in time for summer. We will wax your owl in any of the following styles. Full Brazilian, landing strip, postage stamp slash old timey Hitler, and single feather. We also offer for jazzling, Botox, wing piercing, plus back, sack, and crack. So come on down to Bovingdon Avian Beauty and give your owl the mons pubis we all deserve. Owls that then. Oh, she's ovulating. I can see it. It's gapened. Hello, welcome to Show and Tell, where someone shows and tells me about a thing. It's basically retro gaming based. And today we have the maestro himself, Quang! How you doing? Oh, 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 oh hang on. Let's get this out of the way. Look, everyone, it's everyone's favourite character. The man's daddy. <laughs> Oh, I hate it when he does that. Looks like you're ovulating as well. <laughs> what have you got for us today? Have you got more jokes? He's testing his material out uh, during this series. So, uh, so read out verbatim. Yeah, pick right, one. One of these. Verbatim as it is written, because he's very particular about his comedy writing. Let's see what this is. Yeah. Question. What does BLT stand for? 
I don't know. What does BLT stand for? Answer. Bamuel L. Taxon. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. It's good. Keep them guessing. No, that's a good one, that one. All right, well, then, uh, all right, well, you better bit get going, haven't you? Because you've got that gig off standing half an hour. Right, well, that's him out of the way. What right. have you brought to show and or tell me about today? I have brought you one of the most various Sega Mega Drives that ever existed. But where is it? For I do not see a Mega Drive anywhere in the vicinity of this room. <laughs> tell it's me what it is. hidden inside this beautiful blue boombox. That is the most 90s boombox I have seen. Made by Iowa. Yeah, not so, so tell me what it is. What does it do? So yeah, it's basically a Mega Drive CD built into a boombox that has a CD player, a tape player, and a radio. Can it also play Mega Drive games? Yes, indeed. It's got a cartridge slot up front. Oh. It has two joystick ports for player one and player two. And it'll plug into your TV to play games. So why have I never heard of this before then until today? It was Japanese only. Right. It was released in 1994. Basically, right. it was released three months before the Sega Saturn came out. I believe there's a test at the end of this, and I've got to pass it, or I won't be in the third series. <laughs> it, <laughs> uh, it cost 45,000 yen. Wait, shit, that's a lot of money. How much is that? That's roughly $400. Basically, when it came out, it was roughly the same price as a Sega Saturn anyway. Yeah, and okay. Obviously, the, 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 the press has been talking about this new machine coming out. The Saturn. Saturn. Yeah. And it's already this much money. And then they, they release this and say, hey, why don't you give us that money instead and buy a Mega Drive, which has been out for a number Ever. of years. <laughs> so basically what they were asking for you to do is to buy a load of old kit and resell it in case you didn't have the money for a Saturn, but that was coming out soon and cost only a little bit more. Yeah, so this is why you've never heard of it. Yeah, because no I don't get them. it. I don't get no it. No one bought them. There is rumoured to be less than a thousand of these out there. To be honest, I've been collecting over 20 years, Right. and it took me roughly 20 of those to find one of these that I could buy. Can I be vulgar and ask how much it did cost you? When you got Lots them? of money. All right, I won't go that vulgar then. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> wow. And they're very rare. And does it work? Because I, I don't... I were, were known for high-end boom boxes and stuff back yeah. in the like 80s and 90s, but then that brand kind of waned as it went on. So what you might not know is Iowa was originally a Japanese brand, yeah. uh, making wonderful equipment, high-end equipment, uh, but then they were bought out by Sony. Sony, yeah. And then they were sold off, the brand name was sold off to an American company. Oh, so they just slapped the brand on, the, that, that badge on anything then as a result. But Indeed. this would have been made in the quote-unquote heyday just before the, 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 the purchase of Sony. Yeah. yeah, so it should be in good condition then. It should be in, it should work. Indeed, um, it still works perfectly fine. Uh, we've tested it and it works great. Right, so, so let's start the with the tape. Oh. Is... So this is a proper cassette from the past, but this is a new one. It's a new cassette, yeah. Uh, it's by Bomb Music, this is Trash Human. Trash Human. So we'll hit that, we'll hit the play button. There we go. I think the quality of the tape's a bit poor. I think it's one of those simple tapes, isn't it? Everyone has a way of a wobble yeah, and a flutter. Yeah, it's got wow and flutter. <laughs> well, that's the age of the thing. The belts might need changing on the cassette. Very you know, likely. That kind of thing. Very likely. So it's got that. I was enjoying that. It was nice and mellow, wasn't it? Everyone got very mellow then. We got... Um, Maybe too mellow. A FM and AM radio built into it. It's a remix by uh, Tia. I don't know. Sounds like a pop name, doesn't it? <laughs> Tia Maria, the new artist. Oh, get the CD from the game. Oh, because it's got music on. Yeah, hit play. Let's get some. It's speeding up, and there's, look, there's a number. Track two has been chosen for those watching at home. Right, that's a win. The best bit yet um, is it's going to play Mega CD games. Wolf Team. Wolf Team. And also it will play... Oh, what's that game? Mega Drive cartridges. Really? Oh, oh! Because it was released in Japan. Yes. Does it play American ones as well, or European? So, it... um, Mega Drives were region locked, so right. they will not play other ones. I'm going to show you a cartridge loading in the front of it. It's cool. a real Mega Drive inside, so there'll be no lag. Um, it's playing through your CRT, so it's as if it was a Mega Drive just compressed into the bottom segment of the box. It's funny because if you didn't own a Mega Drive and a Mega CD and whatever, it is an all-in-one, it's a bit expensive, but it's an all-in-one catch-all. You've got your cassette, it's the living 90s, isn't it? It's everything, it's essentially design. It's, it's kind of what like modern video games machines just do anyway. 
Like an Xbox will have your music and your Spotify and your this and your that and play all the systems. And it's a bit like that Panasonic GameCube. Yeah, so the Panasonic GameCube, with his, which is the DVD player with the uh, GameCube all rolled into one. And it's one of those things where you think, why didn't the GameCube just do that? But then it's Nintendo, and it's like, it didn't have to, does it? So we're not gonna. If I remember correctly, the, the, one of the PS2's biggest selling points was it, it was a DVD player. Yeah. Because DVDs had just taken off, and if the GameCube was a DVD player as well, like the Panasonic Q was, that would have been way better. It's a weird anomaly. It's kind of lovely that it exists. Shame that it didn't catch on, but it might have been a bit too late. It's one of the things where it's just too little too late. Yeah, because the Mega Drive been out for, what, a decade then? Uh, it would have been eight, nine, so what, five years already? Oh, okay. Five all years, right. but I said the Saturn came out three months later. Yeah, so it felt like it was just like they have all these spur Mega Drive CD parts, and it's like, Iowa, do you want some? And they went, <laughs> yeah, we'll stick him in our boombox, mate. Um, there's, there's a, a regular version of this, so it's, it's in black without the bottom section, so it's Iowa's Regular bean box. It's a, it's a lovely thing, and I I, I thank you to bring for, uh, <laughs> and thank you for bringing it along. I do more than welcome. Why can't I do sentences? They're very popular. Everyone does them. <laughs> sentences. I, I just don't seem to have much fun with them. Get, just get the older I get, the harder they are to form. Words are hard. <laughs> and on that note. Stilton Boys. Paul, look at this product. Go on. It's a real human hand. Where'd you get that from? I got it from uh, ha Hand Brothers. What well, belt falling down? Yeah, my pants have suddenly started falling mm -hmm. down. That's been losing weight because it's a freaking sauna in here. There's a good point. It's a. It's hot in the entrance to the bunker. No one really knows. No. It's, it's got AC in there by and large, yeah, but out here, it's just it's, it's, it's a, a night sweat, out. sweat alcove. We're all gonna be uh, we're gonna be moist and we're gonna be covered in, in yeasty. We're gonna have thrush, is what I'm trying to say. We're all gonna have. Oh. We're all gonna come out of here with thrush. I've never had thrush. It sounds you know, fun. I think I've had it. Have you? Up my bum crack. Is that thrush? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So look. Yeah. Look, it, but it, it's severed, so it's not alive anymore. No, of course. Why don't you tap on the box to see what happens? Why? I shouldn't expect anything to happen because, as far as I'm aware, this is an. <laughs> a movable arm. Here we go. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh mate, come him. on! You can't keep yes. doing this to me. Best God jokes. Nice. Number one uh, jokes. You, 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 you forget that it affects me emotionally when you do that. So yeah. Don't. Well, it affects me emotionally when I look at your face. What a horrible thing to say to my best friend. We're back to Pong. <laughs> We're back to Pong. It's the Pong episode. Pong, 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 Pong. The first game. The first video game. Pong, Pong, Pong. <laughs> Ping yeah. Pong. Why don't you come on down and see my Pong? Ping Pong, Pong. Yeah, hello. I'd like to play Pong, please. What version of Pong have you got? I got Pong Extreme. What makes it extreme? It's not like normal Pong. In what it's respect? It's made by Tiger Day. Why? Why are you doing this? I don't know. I'm just trying to ignore you at this point and just pretend that this is just some sort of like visualization of my mental breakdown Watch this. appearing. Watch this. 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 It was not funny. <laughs> but there's a part that thinks it's more troubling. <laughs> that's going to be my favourite bit in the whole series. Wow, well that's good to know, isn't it? After all this effort, after all this, all, all this effort, and at the end of the day, all of this comes down to him doing this. <laughs> like that for a bit. But we found this down we there as well. We found this down in the uh, down in the chambers. Uh, it's it's a version of Pond produced by. Tiger. Tiger, but weirdly, it's not with a screen. Look, it's it's it looks more like a uh, air hockey table. Yes, it does. That's it exactly. Here's what it says about Pong Extreme. I'll read the box. Please do read the box. Features a super bright lights for extreme Pong gameplay action. Fine. Cool. Digitized. Nice. He said it. Sound. Yeah. Don't don't pull a face. Sound oh, effects. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't pull a face. 
<laughs> I mean, that's exactly what you just that did. That wasn't what I did. Yes, it was. It's the same difference. <laughs> Your face was pulled. No, mine was just a weird thing. Right. Unique handles control the gameplay action. Challenge the computer or play head to head against a second player. You're one of them, uh, aren't you? I'm a second player. 101 yeah. games? How do you get 101 out of. Oh, to be fair. Well, look. look. What's oh, is this They're all quite, in there. quite a booklet, isn't there? What is weird is yeah. this. Is there's a picture of you on the back. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Look, you and Spock. Oh, you know what? Ha, it ha, does ha, actually look a bit ha, like ha, 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 but no, that f looks like me. <laughs> I know it does. That's weird. I've seen when you were little. Uh, a little little dreamboat I was. But yeah. Cherub faced. Cherub faced. You saw me on right, Games Master. Right, yeah, didn't running you? around getting trigger happy. Yeah, and you must saw me. You saw the moment that I broke as a child and realised real pain on a, on a national stage. Why did it affect you so much? I wanted Dominic you just to like me. You did, well, you probably I did wanted like to you. impress. I wanted to impress Dominic. I didn't know who he was from Jack at the time. Hey, do you know that's not his real name? Dominic Diamond? Yeah. Was it Dominic Putes or something? Putes. <laughs> 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 Putes. <laughs> not sure for Putin. No, I'm not sure for Putin. No one goes, oh, here we go, you yeah. Putes is back. Yo, Putes. Yo, Putes. <laughs> How are you doing, Putes? Yo, Putie boy. Hey, Putie boy. Uh, no, it's, it's, I discovered it the other day because I got a message from him. Oh, yeah. um, his real name's Paul. Oh, that's why he changed it to Diamond then, isn't it? Why? Because Dominic Paul's Paul. an awful name, isn't it? No, no, what? What? Paul Diamond. Oh, sorry, I'll just do that when I get no, stuck from now on. No, you're not doing it right. So I'll just do this from now on. Whenever <laughs> I, something doesn't land, I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> no, that's like, like, what I did. It's close yeah. enough. You see, all right, sorry, I had my hands off, yours are the... <laughs> yeah, it's more like it, That's isn't it? Closer. <laughs> it's closer. It's quite fun, though, isn't it, yeah, to do? You know what? Yes. You have mocked, but it's quite fun to do. <laughs> I have. The legendary classic game that excited, ignited the video game industry is back in a new futuristic yes. form. And by futuristic, it means taking it off the telly and Ooh. putting it in a plastic box. But this is quite nicely designed. I Look like that. I like it I have to say, aesthetically, I think that's a nice thing. Pong Extreme is a whole experience of sites that got the. Yeah, okay, you don't need to keep looking. Why are you just staring? Because it's a picture of you. You're just like fixated on it. Does not compute. How am I on here? How am I on there? And I hear yeah. it at the same time. Just like, how, how's it compute? <laughs> you're computer? not doing it right. You have to shake your head from side to side. <laughs> you're right. This is the best part of this series. It is. You're right. So, right, it says you can it. use this to like catch the ball and fire it back. So it's got oh. different types well, of. Well, let's play. have a go. Look. Very noisy, isn't it? Yeah, it's but all games. My, it's hurting my ears. Right, game. Let's just do select of whatever this is. Okay. Now what? Oh, it's gone up. Oh, there's a hundred. I can't see this working very well because the LEDs are very spaced out. Oh, here's my bat. Oh, wait a minute. I've okay. got to fire it in a goal or something. Right. Oh. Oh, this is awful. I don't understand. I mean. Right, there's the thing in the middle. Go. Right, it's the bounced over that way. But I don't. It just scores every time. It yeah, comes every over time. Here. I don't understand. How, is this? But I can't bat it back. I got four points though. That's good. Oh well, okay. Four points playing a pile of shit. One. Five points. Oh, I bounced it back that time. No, I get it. Hey, it's we got impossible. a bit of a rally going though, didn't we? A little bit for a minute. Right, here we go. I mean, there's 101 of these thrilling games. I didn't even look what I was doing. I didn't even look then and I beat them. I must be just skill. No, you're not. You're just, there's something wrong with my side. All right, we'll swap then. Ha. I know I saved it. Just fired it back at you. Oh, I moved it. Yeah, so I won. I got you a point. There you go. I got you that point. No, you didn't. Now, there's something weird going on on this side. Oh, we're not playing two players. That's how you kept winning. You're not even doing it. The bloody computer was playing against me. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm Un sorry. Believable. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not doing it right. <laughs> yeah, you I have am. to do this. this. <laughs> <laughs> the 
long day, isn't it? Yeah. It's a really long, a long day. Old day down in the uh, down in the bunker. In the old bunker. I don't know how you're going to wade through 101 of these games. 42. Game 41. Reflect and catch two moving bars, two play game. Game 42 is a two play game. This game is for two players. This game is the same as the game 41, but with two players. That's what literally what I just read out. It's two, got two like players. This is a nightmare. My issue with it, it's it's there's no accuracy. But you don't because know what, you what, can't because there's, there's too much of a space between each of the LEDs. You can't really accurately do it unless you are literally the computer. I right. kind of do like it at the same time as what well. What I will say is is it feels quite solid. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, given this is probably 20 years old, it's actually in pretty good nick and it's it but it it feels nicely made even though yeah, what it is. You could kill a dog with that. You could kill a dog with that. Uh, it just isn't very uh, very good. I mean, look, we, we always give these a cursory look on this channel and then we laugh and we mock. But I still think to get any kind of play out of this, you've got to be very dedicated to a present you got at Christmas and didn't really want. You're going to have to really dedicate yourself to it, aren't you? You think you really? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would do what I did with all my toys and go, oh, look, I'm flying an X-Wing. Or probably a speeder bike. That's actually better. That's always good. A speeder bike's good. That's Although it. you could even do a pod race with that, couldn't you? You could do a pod race. Yeah. Except that was after my time. Really. I wasn't I wasn't playing children's games at that age, Paul. When when Phantom Menace came out, I was an adult by then. Yeah. And I'd grown up significantly. You're still playing kids' games for a view on a website, though, weren't you? So. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You still paid to play video games. What an adult, adult occupation that is. <laughs> well, he's glitching out, so we'll see you next time on... Nah, we won't see you next time. I'm we're going to go back in the bunker. I'm going to go back in the bunker. What's we're the code? Condition. I've forgotten the code. 1066. 1066. Digitizer. 30 years old. It seems like only yesterday when you did that subtitle thing for Games Master. And that was fun, wasn't it? That was that was a lot of fun. Especially the way that uh, on any comment I made or anything I said on the show, whenever I said the word Mario, you replaced it with the word Hitler. Oh, fantastic. You know, there's still kids today who are still trying to find that game, Super Hitler World, on the NES. Or it's a much underrated sequel, Super Hitler Sunshine on the GameCube. And who can forget that time I said on the show, oh, go on, Mario, stomp those people's heads in. <laughs> and you replaced it with the word Hitler on the subtitles. There's still deaf people today, traumatized by that, who have the very incorrect wrong impression of me. I, uh, but the thing about Digitizer was it was very similar to Games Master in that we were both entities that caused offence and uh, did knob gags and got away with it because um, our bosses didn't really understand what we were doing. So I felt like a kindred spirit in that way. I also felt very intimidated in the same way that I'm always intimidated by people, beings, entities who are genuinely funnier than me. Especially when it comes to surreal, scatological humour, because you can't, you, you can't, you can't theorise that, you know. There's, there's not a, there's not a formula. It's not like a three-part gag structure. When it comes to surreal humour, it's something that's innate. It's something that's natural within you, and and I don't really have it. Um, and a digitizer always did. And it seemed not just effortless, but prolific as well. You just spunked so much of that stuff out. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can be funny, but I have to get up really early in the morning and work really, really hard and apply all kinds of theories to coming up with gags. Digitizer just had it. So thank you very much for making me feel like shit, uh, comedic-wise, for 30 years, making me feel uh, inferior and crap. And you can stop now because I've got three children that do that very successfully every day.
pull. Yeah. Look what I can do. Go on. It's like, you know, in Aliens when the guy had the knife. Yeah. It's like that. But I can do it really fast than this. I'm really cool with it. And there we go. Yeah, see, it's not as easy as it Wait, looks. Wait, what did you do? No, no, look. You've got to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you've got to slow down. You're getting carried away. You're getting too excited. Okay, okay. No, you just... You, Oh, I got one! You got one. I got one! You got one, but not before flapping your hand around like a dead fish. Uh, it's good, though, isn't it? I want to do it again. No, you... It's good, isn't it? No, you cocked it up. No, I'm sorry. It's embarrassing. What a bell end. <laughs> <laughs> For such a bunch of idiots. Instead of enjoying things that are freely available, like trees and bats, we spend our money on other things instead, like films and toys and that. The people who make and sell these things know we'll even spend our money if they incorporate those things into other things we like, to wit, video games, no matter how awkward and incongruous the fit may be. Burger King isn't the only franchise to get a video game adaptation. Both McDonald's and the UK's very own Wimpy can boast the same, but it holds the honour of birthing the most bizarre. The Xbox 360's Sneak King stars the meat monarch himself, a terrifying swollen-headed sovereign with a blank rictus grin, and a habit of lurking around suburban environments, doling out hamburgers to whomever he deems worthy. Alas, the consequence of being a terrifying static-faced regent is that it tends to put people off their food. Consequently, Burger King couldn't just present people with his whopper. He had to hide in bushes before creeping up on them. Never before had the act of stalking been quite so precisely utilised to flog fast food to the masses. For those not in the US or Nottingham, Hooters is basically the Benny Hill of restaurant franchises. It has somehow resisted all efforts to drag it into the 21st century by continuing to employ scantily clad young women as its wait staff. The license was a late addition to Hooters Road Trip, which had been developed under the title Free Wheeling USA. When Hooters got involved, the fundamental game remained a sub need for speed clone. But now we're loading screens and FMV of the iconic hot pant wearing waitresses. Hey there, welcome to Jacksonville. Journey featured realistic digital recreations of the 1970s prog pop rockers, best known for Don't Stop Believing and other hits such as Loving, Touching, Squeezing. The aim of the game was to travel to different planets to reunite the band members with their instruments, which had been scattered across the universe due to a clerical error. Reunite band and gear successfully, and players were treated to a live performance, while you controlled a bouncer whose job it was to keep fans from executing an unwanted stage invasion. Intriguingly, the arcade cabinet played the Billboard Top 100 topper separate ways worlds apart on a constant loop via a concealed cassette tape player. Frankie Goes to Hollywood was one of the most heavily branded music acts of all time, more product than pop group so it's no massive surprise that they got their own home computer game. Rather than some cheap accessible cash-in, FGTH The Game was an avant-garde mix of mini-games, murder mystery and collect -em up It was also notable for being one of possibly only two ZX Spectrum games to feature sperm. Not officially licensed, admittedly, and never officially released, Socks the Cat, Rocks the Hill would have been the only video game in history to be based upon a real-life presidential pet slash PR device. Specifically, Bill Clinton's cat, Socks, who was to have been seen preventing foreign spies from stealing nuclear secrets. 
Alas, before it could have been unleashed on the public, publisher Kaneko went bust, no doubt the result of some deep state cover-up conspiracy. What's your favourite brand of cat food socks? Adrenochrome? It's weird to think how obsessed everyone was with Dallas back in the 80s, particularly the mystery over who shot JR. Nevertheless, as weird as a licence it was, the Dallas Quest worked well by positioning the player as a detective investigating the mystery of a missing map. The story was penned by a couple of the show's actual writers, so it was authentic. So authentic that it featured a giant rat that lived in the South Fork Ranch's barn. The story took an even more bizarre detour to South America where the player encountered talking parrots and adopted a whimsical cartoon monkey sidekick with a taste for chewing tobacco. Falling somewhere between homage and pastiche, this early 90s soap tie-in eschewed the show's storylines in favour of an isometric racing game. Players could be their favourite neighbour's character, including Scott, making this possibly the only game ever to feature a playable Jason Donovan, and speed around Ramsey Street avoiding obstacles such as cars, Bouncer the Dog, Mrs Mangle and Kangaroos, which, as any neighbour's fan and or Australian can attest, a regular hazard in most suburban neighbourhoods, along with drongos, drop bears and bogans. Another soap-based effort, this abysmal ZX Spectrum debacle, chose not to go the route of tackling the show's depressing melodrama. Instead, you played a wandering cockney who would roam Albert Square helping the residents with their laundry, allotment responsibilities, the running of their giant fruit and veg stalls, apparently, and alcoholism by pouring pints in the Queen Vic. Being the world's greatest topical satirist, I couldn't help but notice that the acronym for this first-person shooter, officially licensed from the US Armed Forces and intended as some sort of patriotic recruiting tool, is AA, which is somewhat ironic given that the AA is where many of America's army end up following their participation in the country's countless wars of dubious morality and legality. Oh, take that sick burn, you military industrial complex. Boom! The 1972 Atari Classic, one of the first and most influential video games of all time. We're going to honour that legacy today by playing Pong for Real. And I have with me here to play this, Paul Gannon, Larry Bundy Jr. Um, so, um, gentlemen, it's, it's quite simple. It's a uh, game of true, true or false. Simple as that. It's just a like real trivia pong. game. You got fifty. You just like real pong. Yeah, just like I remember pong. <laughs> I mean, like remember real all pong. that trivia in pong. <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember the old game systems, the old pong systems, where they had like multiple choice questions and stuff. Yeah. Remember that. Yep. Remember that, Larry. Yeah, Stop yeah, talking there. now. Do you remember that? <laughs> Nolan Bushnell with his trivia. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That brown box. Remember that? <laughs> so there is a slight <laughs> twist. Oh, is there? Yes, because there's another type of pong as well as ping pong, isn't there? Yes. Yes, and it's a pong you smell like a poo, like yeah. a poo smell. Like Very, a clever. Poo. Very original, by the way. <laughs> so, here's how it works. If you get a question wrong, you get a pong ball in, in, your, in your cone, cone in your goal. Shame. In your goal. But if you get a question right, your opponent gets a pong ball in their, in their cone of shame. So, are we... <laughs> No, you know what? I'm glad you're having fun with this because I thought for the new series you'd do some new ideas. But no, it's just, how can I make Paul or Larry throw it because I've overwhelmed them with the stench of shit? There's no way anyone will let us do this series. No, they won't let us do this series. You're right. Why wouldn't they let us do this seriously? Why not give them retro gaming content? It's not good. Everyone's complaining about this. You're the only one who wants to do this segment. I do like the fact that you've given us a bit of tissue to protect our t-shirts. It's going to soak in the smells even more. Larry, I'm going to ask Larry the first question. I can smell it from here. I mean, just so everyone knows, this smells of, like, shitty arse crack. You know, this is like that bum stench you get when the unpleasant person sits next to you on the bus. It's that. You just do a sonic rings it, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> why, just, why don't you just put that clip in of that, since you're so fucking proud of it? Stick that clip in again. And save us all this. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke, Larry. Yeah. Don't look at my no, answers. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke was a computer animation enthusiast and in the 90s would appear at tech conventions to show off short and unfrated films that he'd made on his Commodore Amiga. True or false? False. 
Unfortunately, it's true. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> it's true. It is. He was a. He even has. Oh shit! I've got it on my fingers. He even has. Oh, poor you, eh? Poor yeah, you. Poor he you. even oh, has a, a credit. Oh, no. ah. How is this pond for real? Damn <laughs> <laughs> it's for real. Uh, Paul, on a tour. <laughs> On a tour of the Sinclair factory in 1983, <laughs> British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher described the spectrum as a new type of high-tech calculator, true or false? False. <laughs> uh, yes, false. So hey. I guess another <laughs> Fun- <laughs> There we go. Oh, no! Oh no, I've got the stink oh, no. shit. Oh, I've got to replace one here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, the working title of 1993 Claymation beat em up clay fighter was Daffy Taffy, true or false? False. That is false. Yeah. Paul gets one. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Lara Croft creator Toby Gard has a qualification in home economics, specifically a GCSE. True or false? False. It's false, so Larry gets a... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm looking for it. Oh, God. <laughs> it touched my <laughs> phone. It touched my phone. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's got a very vegetable smell. Is that what you call it? Uh, Larry, the inside of every <laughs> Commodore Amiga 1000 has been signed by a dog. True. Yep. Good. <laughs> Good. That is true. Good. It's one of the creative dogs. Cool. cool. It is what you'd be like using a saw. Yep. <laughs> so Clive Sinclair, Larry. That's my go. To Clive Sinclair, Paul. Yeah. The inventor of the is expect Jesus Christ. The, uh, the boffin, the bandy boffin. Don't yeah. look at this. I'm not. The I inventor of the, the ZX thing. Spectrum designed his first invention at the age of 14, and it was a one-person submarine. True or false? True. Uh, it is true. So oh. we'll... <laughs> God, it. I'll tell you. <laughs> if that feels <laughs> just sick. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. Larry, the, the gene which determines the size of your coccyx is called Sonic Hedgehog. True or false? True. Uh, no, it's false. It, it's the name of the gene that determines the number of eyes you have. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and a big one! <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Eugene Jarvis, the creator of Defender <laughs> Robotron 2084 and Cruising USA, once claimed he could swim faster than a swordfish. True. False. Oh dear. Give me one of the big balls. Not fair. Did I've you say give ball. you one of the big no. balls? I've just given him one of the big balls. <laughs> Larry, it's the last two questions oh, now. God. Prior to purchasing it for 17 million in 2004, the home of Chris Stamper, co-founder of Ultimate Play the Game and Rare, was true, home, true, I don't was, care. Was home to an old lady in a three-legged <laughs> cat. It is true. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I can't get it off. Last question, Paul. True. The first actor to provide motion capture for Lara Croft is called was called Heidi Moneymaker. True. It is true. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's been Digitizer Level Two. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>